Good morning, everybody. I've been live for 30 seconds and didn't even know it. So what else is new? How's everybody doing? Let's see what's happening here. <clears throat> Just trying to find myself on Facebook. Which it says I'm not live on Facebook. Hmm. Give me a sec, guys. Bear with me here. Okay. We are definitely live here. All right, I think we're good. Give me a sec, guys. Bear with me here. Yep, there I am. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, guys. I'm having my first sip of coffee as we speak. And I need it. Hope everyone's doing great. And, oh, let's see. Francesca's here. Good morning, Sharon. Sharon, I'm not sure if you checked your emails, but I sent you an email this morning. I don't have the manager privileges on your channel anymore, so you'll have to add that. And I also sent you an invite if you actually wanted to jump onto the live stream with me and we can actually talk live while we're going through it. So totally up to you. Um, Francesca, I see you are backstage there right now. Um, would you be able to call in Francesca in about 30 minutes? Would that be possible? Like, we'll say 10.30. I just said, oh, there we go. Awesome. Thanks, friend. All right, guys. So, yeah. Um, today, in addition to taking your questions, we're going to attempt to do a couple of channel reviews. Uh, Sharon has volunteered her channel just to get some insights on it. And Francesca McKenzie, who is a kinesiologist here in Toronto, um, she has a channel that I've actually filmed some content for, and we're going to talk about her channel as well, which is Brand Spanking News. So a couple of very diverse, uh, different approaches, and, and uh, yeah. Let's see. I'm scatterbrained this morning. Back to the comments. Good morning, Valerie like that new uh, logo icon of yours. Uh, if anybody gets a chance, check out Val's page this morning, Home Workout Health Hub. We started a bit of a transformation there that we're hoping to finish up in the next 24 hours or so. And this or that fitness, good morning. Uh, Sharon, uh, FYI, having trouble with download, trying to get it to work, yes, work your backs. Okay, perfect, I haven't checked my email, Sharon, but um, if, if it doesn't work out, that's okay. Um, if you can make it work. Good. Either way, I can talk to you over chat as well. So, Live and Love Fit, good morning. Hope you're doing well, my man. So, guys, we can jump right into questions. I can... Uh, I was thinking I'd, we'll be doing questions during the um, reviews, which I think you guys should stick around for because... A lot of the pain points that you guys experience in your channels are the same thing. Um, a lot of the times it's, you know, it's why are my views low, why this kind of thing. So we're going to go into the analytics. You're going to be able to see what's going on with these channels and add your two cents, ask questions. So it'll give us something to play off of a little bit today. Um, aside from that, in my world, there's some new things happening. Um, I have, I'm going to be putting a lot more time into this channel and my workout channel. I am that close from being full-time YouTube now, um, by choice, um, made a decision this week. I had, uh, I have so many good things happening 
professionally right now between you know the digital brands that I'm trying to do on YouTube and in this agency and things like that I just decided uh, on a whim that any negativity in my life whether it be clients uh, anything like that was going to be removed and they were and I freed up some of my time and um, it's going to allow me to do a lot more with uh, both of my channels which I'm really excited about um, but uh, yeah yeah when you start bordering on burnout it's time to uh, make changes and and I'm usually pretty reactive when it comes to that stuff so here we are expect more videos soon good morning Budo Pilates Ivana Chapman good morning Mel Fierce Fitness George good morning to you it's nice to see a few new faces out we've got we've got our diehards that come out every week and I and I, I always love the support. We always have great chats, but it's always nice to have a few new people who can share their stories, have, have their questions and stuff as well. So that's perfect. Uh, do I sound okay, guys? Video's okay? Looks okay from my end, but you never know. I love this microphone. If any of you guys are going to start doing live streams or vlogs of any sorts, um, I upgraded to this Yeti microphone and um, really, really like it. Um, Worth every penny. Body by Paradise. Good morning. Where's everybody from? I'm seeing some new faces here. This is exciting. Boys, settle down. My dogs always decide it's the perfect time to start fighting all around the equipment whenever I start one of these. Either that or they take a poop. Perfect. A okay. Sound okay? Awesome. So what's happening in uh, YouTube land, guys? Are people seeing growth? Are people, uh, are you guys hitting some uh, roadblocks? What's going down? User from Atlanta, Georgia. Good morning to you. One sec, guys. We're right back. Just going to grab some. Case Pilates, good morning. Val from Jersey. Facebook user, what's the common mistake people make when growing their channel? Um, there's, there's a few common mistakes, but I find the most common is um, a lack of patience. A lot of people, they when they start YouTube, they start with a lot of motivation and they'll post several videos and they will judge success purely based on views. And if they don't get the views that they like, or if they don't get the views that perhaps they're used to on say Instagram, they give up. And then eight months later, a year later, two years later, they get motivated, they come back again, same thing and they give up. And so the lack of consistency, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is a big problem. Um, this is not as hard as people make it out to be. Um, I've said many different times that 18 months ago I was not monetized and I had under 2,000 subscribers and uh, it took me a while to get the 4,000 hours of watch time. 18 months later I'm at 16,000 subscribers, I make money off Google, I make money off sponsors and I, um, I get I think it's 7,500 hours of watch time per month whereas before I couldn't get 4,000 in a year. So if you started today and put some commitment in, and by the way, that was one video a week. I think on average it was less than one video a week I posted. So really to me, it's put an effort into this for 18 months at least. Um, be consistent at least on a weekly basis. Don't binge and then take three month breaks because your, your channel looks dormant. Um, but put that kind of time and effort in and you'd be surprised what could happen. Um, but that's definitely the, personally, I find the biggest mistake is, is people just, they're, they're inconsistent with it. Um, that's, uh, that's my take on it. But I mean, there's other things as well. I mean, I, I see people that, you know, I understand that for a lot of us, we don't have 
all the equipment available to do a high-end production. That's fine. That's normal. Mm -hmm. But you still need to put the time into um, production quality. You know, if you have a decent smartphone, you can produce a pretty decent live stream or workout or, or what have you. But, you know, like any business, there's time has to be put into it. You have to make sure the quality is high because, I mean, all you have to do is one workout search on YouTube and you can see what you're up against. Um, you know, you don't have to be putting out massive budgets, but you have to make sure that what you're producing is nice and clean. And, um, you know, and just things like colors and, and stuff in the background, like it, it can... Uh, that stuff's important. All right, I need to get some coffee into me. This is that fitness from Texas. Fit life lover, good morning. Living life fit. I'm in the process of populating my channel. 16 videos is the target. It's my main priority. Before I re-strategize, However, I'm gaining new subs every day. As long as you're gaining subs every day, that's perfect. Um, and I, I don't know if you've heard that here or not, but I'm very big on the 16 video, like amp it up, get it done quick, because um, that fills in your page. The next thing would be coming up with a nice, clean thumbnail that makes all the videos look very much unified, uh, even though they're different subjects and stuff like that. Then you make sure that your icon and your banner match your thumbnail. So then you've got this nice, clean, branded looking channel. And then you can slow things down. You can start putting up, you know, one quality video a week or two quality videos a week or whatever you have time for. Um, that's good, man. And you've been getting a lot of growth from shorts, if I'm not mistaken, too, right? No, it's really difficult to get that 4,000 watch hours. I, I Trust me, I know. It was brutal. And it's... It's that 365 day span. And what, what happened to me is I'd be at like 3,996 hours and I would gain five hours in a day and then I would lose two or something. And so it kept on just dipping me back down like because it would take off hours from day one and then it would add hours from day 360. So it kept moving forward like that. And that went on for I'm sure it was like a month or two before it finally got over and then it finally got approved and then we're off to the races. But it amazed me when I looked the other day and saw just how, um, how much it's changed because now it's between 7,500 and 8,000 hours per month. And, and that really just was a matter of a couple videos taking off and, and then we were off to the races. So uh, stick to it, Mel. Um, it, it takes a little bit of time, but keep going. One thing that I have done uh, to sort of hack the watch time hours on this channel is these live streams. Um, live streams are a great way to accumulate um, watch hours. So, I mean, you could attempt to do some live stream workouts. Because um, on average, uh, the most I've ever got from one of these live streams is in a 24 hour period, I think it was close to 130 hours of watch time. Um, on average, it will be usually around 50 or 60 hours of watch time per live stream. So when you think of that over the course of a month, so even if it's 50 hours per live stream, I do four of these a month, that's 200 extra hours a month, 2,400 extra hours uh, in a year, and, and that amps it up quick. Like Because of live streams, this channel will be monetized by the end of this year. If it wasn't for live streams, I don't believe it would be. So that's a quick hack to kind of amp up your, your, uh, your watch time. I actually saw a guy yesterday who did, uh, he does kind of YouTube um, help videos and he did a 12 hour Q&A live stream. <laughs> and I can't imagine the amount of watch time he probably accumulated because he's a pretty big uh, channel. I think you make the number of videos as the goal and not the subscribers will keep you motivated. So it's a win after you produce 25 then 50, et cetera. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't think you should think about subscribers at all. Focus on your community. I mean, this channel, I bet when I started doing these live streams, this channel was still at about a, maybe 150 subscribers. Um, you know, even now, like you look at these live streams on my channel and they only have 60, 70 views. But from those 60 or 70 views, I have made, I've got clients from it. Uh, I've built a community from it. Um, a lot of good has happened with those smaller numbers and six, I think I'm at 600 now or something for subscribers. I kind of stopped checking, but um, 
there's a nice thriving community here for uh, personal trainers and, and people trying to grow fitness channels at those numbers. So, I mean, don't focus on the subscribers. This is something that I, I blame uh, apps like Instagram for this, where people become so focused on likes and love and all that kind of stuff. And, and this is just a different thing. This is a, this is a mini business for you and it's just going to be a slow build. And I, I would personally rather have, you know, si <coughs> excuse me, 600 really good, um, followers or subscribers to this channel that really enjoy the content than to have 6,000 and nobody's really paying attention and half of them are haters and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, don't, don't think about the subscribers that much. This or that fitness. We're in a predicament because we're getting picked up by schools, so we're making progress on watch hours, but it's throwing off the YouTube algorithm, we think. Weird makeup of external versus search. Yeah, it, it, that'd be hard. It's hard for me to comment on that without actually seeing your analytics. Um, if you're getting watch time from schools, well, I'd be really curious to see um, what it's doing. Because if they're not logged into YouTube, then you don't the watch time and the views and stuff don't get accumulated but that's still um if you're getting utilized by schools as a as like a kind of a phys ed program or something hey stop that um that's that's huge that's a really good thing and, and i mean to me that's the benefit of of um doing workouts that are that are focused or that are kid friendly um because i mean there's potential there for you to make outside YouTube money in terms of, you know, sponsorships or selling programs and stuff. So don't even worry about watch time when it comes to that, because that could be a really big thing for you guys to, to focus on. That's awesome. And you saw, you saw the live stream. Yeah. The poor guy was sweating pretty bad by 11 o'clock last night. Oh, Mel, you saw that too. Yeah. I, I like um, Daryl's stuff. He's, he's pretty, He's pretty good. He's pretty straight up with his content. There's a couple of them that, I, that I'll watch a little bit. The only thing I find with some of them is that what they're saying doesn't always um, have a direct correlation with the fitness industry because there's just a different type of consumer there. Um, they focus a lot on consumers that are watching for entertainment purposes like gaming channels or you know stunts and things like that. Whereas with you guys, you are selling a product, which is you, and you're trying to develop a community, and there's a long-term strategy that has to be made here that your community is, from day one, from subscriber one, you have to start thinking about ways that you're going to eventually try and make money with this. I mean, I, I guess some of you probably could be doing this um, to grow an external brand or just for fun or, or things like that. I, I go into these um, as a business, um, you know, I, I, thankfully I love doing it and I have a passion for it, but for the amount of time it takes and, 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 um, takes away from my other businesses and stuff, I mean, you have to, um, you know, it has to be worth something in that sense, but Val started to notice ads at the beginning of some of my work videos yesterday. I don't have a thousand to 4,000 watch hours. I read YouTube started to do late last year to non monetized channels. Yeah. I did a video on that Val back in October or November, if you go back, I'll see, I don't know if I can find it or not. Um, if I can, I will post it in the comments here. But um, yes, be they just basically decided they're gonna start force feeding um, channels with, with ads uh, because there's channels out there that have 10 subscribers, but there's a video of their Cocker Spaniel doing something cute that has 16 million views. That's, they're missing the boat with that. And the nice thing about this for YouTube, because those channels aren't monetized, they can sell that ad space and they don't have to share it with the, the, actual, um, the actual content creators. So it's, it works out really well for them. Uh, where's that video? Library. But yeah, that was the thing that came up. It was kind of... A lot of people were stressed about it. I get, I'm not, I'm monetized now, so it doesn't affect me too much. Um, yeah, here it is.
I believe what I just clicked there, I think that's the video that I did on it. So if any of you guys are interested in, you're gonna start seeing ads pop up in your videos if you're not monetized, so don't be surprised. Living Love Fit, I'm gaining new views from the shorts and the 1Ks, although this is great. I feel as though in the long run, this may be damaging as my initial goal has always been to put out great all-rounded content. Yeah, um, shorts are kind of like, um, it's a kind of a quick fix. Um, I did a, a uh, channel review on Home Workout Health Hub just recently, and we kind of talked about that. Her analytics were very difficult to read for me, more than anything I've done in the past. And a big part of it, I think, was um, the shorts because they have this kind of spike that they that they do and, and then it kind of falters and it just kind of messed, you don't know if it's a good thing or bad. That was the biggest thing, conclusion I was coming to is that there were elements of it that were good for her channel, but there was elements of it that were bad. So overall, I couldn't decide whether or not this was a good thing or not. But I think always you need to focus on quality long form content. The shorts are not gonna make your channel, they may, they may um, you know, drive a little bit of traffic there. Um, I don't think it's, you know, I don't think they're following, they're not following the shorts. I don't, I don't, I'd like to see how many shorts are leading to subscribers. I, I don't really know in, in the long term if it's really gonna make that difference. But if you're at a point where you're really just trying to grow, I don't think there's any harm in trying a couple. Just don't make a habit of it because it's, it's not something that's gonna last very long. Um, uh, Valerie, it's a channel, uh, Daryl Eaves is his name. He did the 12 hour live stream because he's got a new book out that he's promoting. Um, but he, yeah, he had different people come on for interviews and did Q and A's, did channel reviews, did, did a lot of different stuff, but he just basically stayed on the air for 12 hours. Thoughts on incorporating giveaways into content. Um, Technically, if you're being sponsored that content and you're giving it away, it's kind of like having a sponsored video, which means you just have to um, acknowledge that it's a sponsored video. Um, if it's stuff you're buying and giving away, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You're just, you're just giving away stuff that you're buying yourself. So I don't think that's something that you have to be concerned about. Um, so I think it's allowed. Thoughts on incorporating giveaways. It depends where your channel's at, guys. Um, you know, with some of these question marks, we should try and do a review on your channel, maybe on one of these days on the air, and, uh, and just kind of look at it. Because I know you guys are relatively new. If you're still at, you know, the point of getting 100 subscribers, and then you're, you do a video, like next week on the workout, we're going to give away a, an exercise bike or something, um, you know, tell all your friends. If I'm a subscriber to your channel, I'm not gonna tell anybody because I wanna keep the odds low so I can win the exercise bike um, or whatever the prize may be. So I don't know if that's gonna help build stuff. I mean, I guess you can share that on social media. Um, but again, I think it's one of those things where it's kind of a, a gimmick promotion sort of thing that may get you a small spike, but people may also just unsubscribe when they don't win or unsubscribe three weeks after they don't win. Um, so, I mean, I don't value that higher than getting content out and getting it out fast and, and good quality stuff that you can build that YouTube community with. Because first and foremost, when your channel's small, you need to be focused on, on growing that community and the community that's within YouTube and not the crossover stuff and posting you know giveaways on Facebook to try and get them to jump over. Because it's almost like a, a bribe in a sense. Um, so I just don't know, like, uh, like if I were to do some kind of a giveaway on a live stream, um, I might announce that, okay, next week I'm going to give a free one year membership to my, um, you know, my YouTube launch program. I wouldn't be doing that to get new people to watch. I would be doing that to get you guys that have all watched on and off to all show up at one time. Dusty, stop digging holes in the floor. Um, so I would be more focused on my existing community. So if you're doing, I guess what I'm trying to say, if you're doing a giveaway to um, 
as kind of a giveaway for your existing community, go for it. If you're looking at it to build and grow the community, I don't think it's going to be that effective. Sharon, I didn't do any shorts until recently. I do two different five-day workout challenges. Cardio and abs didn't really give me any great views. Um, we'll look at that, Sharon, when we look at your channel later, if we're going to do that today and see how the shorts did for you. Because, I, yeah, I've heard people that haven't had much luck with them either. So um, just uh, it just depends on how it's done, I guess. Elite Fitness, good morning. Just check and see here. 1027. So I think what we'll do, guys, um, Francesca, if you're listening, if you want to call in in the next few minutes, feel free, and we'll start doing that review. Um, have a look at how things are going. I am doing great, man. It's been a good week. How are you doing? There's Francesca, that was quick. Good morning. Hi. I can see you, I cannot hear you. Oh, you know what, <laughs> hold on. I had Facebook open, so there was kind of like a, a look background a sound, is that better? Um, I'll bring your channel up, Francesca, while we're chatting oh here. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Regan? There's a little cog at the bottom of the page, Francesca. It says Cam Mike. Click on that and just try your, you'll probably have different options. Like one of them could be the microphone in your laptop and the other one could be cam light it might just be set for the wrong one or maybe it's me let me see default any stereo let me check here yeah it might be me hang on a sec Talk now, Fran. Hello? Now I got you. All right. I was like oh, saying hi, problem. but <laughs> I was like, he's ignoring me live. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thanks. How's it going? No stuff here I missed. Um, yeah. Uh, Christy, you can hear it. <laughs> it was me. I had my, my speaker settings wrong on this thing. All my stuff was coming through here, so. Oh, yes, guys, is. as Elite Fitness says, if you guys have a chance, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Um, if you give it a thumbs down, I will find you. I'll figure out who did it. But uh, that just helps people know that the videos are, are half decent. So. so to give you a bit of background, um, Francesca and I have known each other for probably about six or seven years now, mm -hmm. I would guess. Um, and she is a kinesiologist in Toronto. And just over the summer, um, she came down to my studio and we shot a bunch of content for, um, I guess it's not specifically a YouTube channel, right? This is for a kind of a bigger project you're working on. Um, well, I think I'm just gonna have it as part of the channel and incorporate and embed the videos onto my website as kind of like a database or a resource. But then I also yeah. realized that I wanna add more content in general. I'm just bringing it up here. Oops, what's going on? All right. So the big thing with your channel is this is not going to be so much a um, what's wrong with it because you really haven't started yet. No. In my opinion. <laughs> um, 
Everything's <laughs> there. So let me bring it up. I'm going to do a share screen. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. So let's go to the channel. This feels like a report card. It is. You make it okay. <laughs> Oh, and I'm playing videos. Oops. Too many screens in here. Shush. All right. Everybody should be able to see that okay. So, yeah. So, so basically, what's going on? String error. I think you're at a point now where um, you should be doing some long form content for your channel. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, this is a huge database. Guys, if you haven't um, checked out this channel, check, it, check out FitFX Training on YouTube. Um, right now, there's probably 100 different um, exercise tutorials on proper form for exercises by somebody who very much knows what she's doing. Um, it's a great resource. I've used it myself. Um, and uh, a lot of good stuff on there. So if you guys get a chance, smash the subscribe button. I'm sure Fran will return the favor. Mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, so there's a lot of good stuff in there if you wanted to learn proper form and exercises. So the way your channel's set up now, in my opinion, I felt this even when we set it up before, it's um, essentially set up for somebody who's Googling. Like if I were to check, even with the, is everything public now on this? I guess I can. Actually... Yeah, most things are public with okay. the exception maybe like one or two videos. So bring it up here again. Yeah, so we're just starting out with any of the stats and stuff. But this is the one I'm curious about reach. Yeah, exactly what I thought. External is 37% of your viewers right now, which are people searching for those exercises on Google and coming across your videos through it. Um, so that's kind of what I, your channel is, has the potential right now to be a huge resource, but I don't think it's, the, it's there's nothing there to keep them. Like it's basically, I want to know how to do a, uh, a plank. I'm going to Google it. I'm going to find your video. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to learn and I'm going to move on with my day, which is awesome. You can get a ton of views that way. But I think for conversion to potential clients and stuff, um, there's got to be a bit more of you in there, um, which would be thing like I saw you did the vlog recently where you kind of talked over the video um, uh, just yesterday, wasn't it? On Instagram? Yeah, I just posted something yesterday on like office posture. Yeah. So, I mean, stuff like that, I think, is good um, when you start building up a bit of a, a variety of those things, um, doing maybe some actual uh, long-form content workouts uh, would be good. You're getting lots of love in your channel. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, my goodness. Got all those comments. <laughs> Thanks, guys. One thing I will say with this community, they're very supportive. Yeah, they all kind of all regan stuff. And, um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, that's I, it, like, I, I don't pass judgment, <coughs> excuse me, on any of these things right now. Um, like ideally YouTube search should be your highest, um, your highest traffic source. That's what you want. Like if, if on my channel, for example, YouTube search accounts for probably 60% of my um, traffic to my page which, and that comes down to titles and thumbnails and stuff like that. And I'm, I think your titles and thumbnails are fine. Um, I made them myself. <laughs> <laughs> like you made them. <laughs> but, I mean, it's the same, it's the same template that I do with a lot of channels where it's just basically big letters, um, and just a, a nice still shot in the background. We didn't do a full on photo shoot, but that's something that with you having the master, I think you do, if not, I'll give it to you. You can just basically take a photo and just slip it in, but you're, you're, um, your thumbnail always has the same structure to it, which just makes the channel look much more attractive and professional, which especially in your case, I think is important. Um, but I think it's gonna come down to like, 
it's going to come down to basically getting some longer form content, whether that be, you know, uh, if you focus more on the kinesiology thing, like I do think stuff like, um, you know, office posture and stuff like that could be even better than just doing another workout. There are a lot of workout channels out there. So that could be the way to do it. Um, oh, Valerie's subbing to you now. But um, yeah, so I mean that, that, let me see from your, see more. Too many screens on the go here. Okay, here we go. Channel pages. Views twenty six. So that okay, see that right there, fifteen point four percent. That's high. That's really good. Um, and suggested videos is YouTube suggesting your videos to people. And nice. people that are, people that, if 15% of the people, now again, we're only dealing with 13% uh, impressions here because your channel hasn't been around long enough and isn't growing enough that they're going to be showing it to more people. But regardless of the amount of impressions, the fact that 15% of the people that were shown it clicked on it, um, that speaks volumes to the title to the thumbnail and to the content. And these people are also, um, I mean, again, they're watching at least half your videos because I mean, they're all essentially in that one minute range. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. That's good, that's positive. Facebook user, love your studio. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, Sharon just subbed as well. Thanks, Sharon. <laughs> um, so that's really, there's not a whole lot we can talk about right now, Fran, because it just basically comes down to what the next step is. Um, and it's something you and I can talk about. You're, you're aesthetically set up. Um, you've got content there. It's really just a matter of getting more subscribers, getting more people watching so that YouTube starts to pick up more of these videos and, and get them out there in the recommended videos and then hope that you can keep anywhere close to that kind of a click-through rate, that 15.4%. Um, um, yeah. Because, I mean, again, even um, as you get more, the more impressions you get, the mo that will go down, um, for sure. That's, that's just the nature. Like, my click-through rates on videos are probably about, I don't know if it's 45 or 5%, but I'm getting 700,000 impressions per month. So there's just no way that everyone's going to like my stuff that much. Um, but still it's, it's a good start and that, that to me, and, and again, guys, this goes to show, like, here's a channel with, like, she really hasn't done anything with it yet. It's only got a couple subscribers. Um, it's just kind of been there as a resource for her other business, but, um, you know, the potential is there for it. You don't look at the views, you go back in and you can see, even with the very limited traffic that it's got, that the traffic that it's got is positive because with the impressions to the click-through rate, that's a good percentage. Um, and, and external shows that it's basically, yeah, like Google search is going to bring up. And, and, and again, I, I made my channel through Google search. Um, trap bar deadlift. Google it sometime because mm -hmm. my video is the first one that comes up. And it's the video I did with Joe. And um, that is what got my channel going. And then I had to basically keep just adding logs to that fire. So that can be a big thing. Being, being a resource for that. And that's another reason, guys, why I tell you when you do workout videos, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Time, time stamp each exercise. So if, uh, you know, if static squats start at 38 seconds, do the 0038 static squats, one minute and 21 seconds, uh, bench press, whatever that may be, because that actually um, helps with SEO. It helps you. Um, come up in search results. Like if you've ever looked for something, like if you looked up how to do something and a video comes up and it's already preset on that video to start at a minute and 47 seconds into the video, that's basically because that person timestamped whatever it is you're searching in a video that's a, on a much bigger subject. But the bottom line is you still got the view, they still find you, they may see more stuff on your channel they like and may subscribe. So timestamp your exercises in your videos 
um, for extra SEO benefits. Because now all of a sudden, in addition to what your video is titled, people might find you by typing in all of those individual exercises. Is it easy to timestamp throughout the video? Yeah, it is. Like, how do you do it? All you do is, let me see if I can bring up one of your videos to do it. I wonder if anyone else is curious about this. Let me see. Remind me to change this back later, but. You can use that foam roll video because that foam roll video is really old and I think it's set to private. This one? The, the one underneath it. Yeah, it's set to private. Oh, this one, okay. Yeah. So all you have to do, now you would normally have some sort of a description in here. Right. Um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna share this one because I made this like six years ago, maybe more. Yeah. <laughs> So let's say you were doing six different ways of using a foam roller. Um, like name name one foam rolling exercise. Like I don't first, know. Like I'm... First thing you need to do is you will go zero 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 zero. Video begins. Now just give me one foam roller exercise. Um, foam rolling the glutes. Okay. Piriformis roll or something. Foam rolling. Glutes. We can delete this after. Yeah. Um, zero, one, oh, two. Give me one other exercise. Uh, foam rolling back. And give me one more. Uh, foam rolling adductors, inner thigh. So I'm, I'm just making up the times, obviously. Um, Oops, what am I doing here? So it's just as simple as like um, just noting exactly what time it is and you just put it in the description. Right. So so basically um, you need to do this one here, the zero zero, in order to set it. So it always has to be there. The video begins or start video or whatever you want to call it. But that needs to be there. So when I go to save this now. And I click on the video. Should. Yeah, so you can see the little breaks Got it. in the timeline and you can go down here. So now see where it's it's highlighted. So if I click on this now, it boom, it bumps me ahead to 152. Awesome. So if somebody Googles foam rolling for inner thigh, this could come up and it'll come up already set at 152. Because now not only is this a video on foam rolling benefits and release, it's also a tutorial on inner thigh foam rolling and they can just jump right to the part they want and watch it. So that basically, it al it's almost like giving your video like six, seven, eight different titles, which just, it, you know, it's, it's not a guarantee of anything, but it just gives you that much more of an opportunity to get found, um, which in the early stages is what you want. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, all right, just got some questions here coming in. Some people don't show how many subs they have on their channel. Regan, what do you suggest? Um, I would just show it, Val. Um, I, I know the people that don't is because they're embarrassed of how many subscribers they have or don't have. Um, I would just show it. I mean, it's. I don't think it matters one way or another, but I mean, it's. I, I always showed what I had. I didn't. To me, if somebody's not showing it, that tells me nobody's watching. I mean, people can also they can see how many people are viewing your videos anyway. So I don't, if somebody's gonna judge you on the subscribers, you probably don't want them as a subscriber anyhow. But um, it's an option that's there for people if they wanna be private about it until they feel comfortable. But I mean, that to me is just a part of a much bigger problem, but we'll get it there. Um, and uh, and it, it, it's gonna, it's a part of a bigger problem in that you're obsessing over the vanity metrics. Um, so I would show it. To me, that's like ripping the Band-Aid off. Don't worry about it. Just focus on your content. The subscribers will come. Don't, don't worry about vanity metrics, which are subscribers and views, because they're not going to help you grow. Um, oops. Sorry, guys. I'm going to rip through these questions now. Sharon, uh, <coughs> as, you remember, um, as you may remember, my traffic is mainly from Facebook. I do remember that. Uh, it would be hard for me to not use that avenue. It has definitely helped with subscribers. 
Um, yeah, and I think Sharon, your your channel started more in a community, like it started within the community you live in, if I'm not mistaken, um, which I think you relay a lot of messages to them through Facebook. So that's this is just an organic way of growing. Um, yes, it may throw off your metrics. The problem is though, if you're, you have to look at the analytics and decide, okay, uh, Facebook is, it's hard for me not to use that avenue because it's getting me 250 views, but out of those 250 views, the average watch time is 15 seconds. Whereas the people that are finding me on YouTube, there's only 40 of them. I've got 40 views on this video from YouTube, but those people are watching this on a smart TV for five minutes and 25 seconds. That 15 second average watch time from Facebook is dropping your overall average watch time on that video, which is telling the algorithm that the video can't be all that good because these people are abandoning it. Now, the one benefit is that if somebody's not signed into um, YouTube, then then they may their metrics may not count. It may not even show up. But if it is showing up in the in the analytics, then they are signed into YouTube, and they're not watching it for long. So it's like you're getting the view, you're losing the watch time. The watch time makes you grow. So then it comes down to the decision: Do you want the view or do you want the watch time? Because the, if the people on YouTube are the ones that are watching it in long form and actually doing the workouts, those are the people that you want. So you may, it's, it's almost like things have to get worse before they get better. Um, that, that would be my uh, opinion on that. So it's just, it's, it's not to say that it's, but again, we'd have to look and see what your watch time is from the people that are watching on YouTube, which we can check into today. Um, case Pilates. What about tags? Fran is not using any. Regan, do you think they're still with it? Fran has not set up her channel, Krista, um, yet. <laughs> we're we're going to talk. Oh, Regan, what, I yeah. thought I actually did put tags on my channel. Maybe I did it incorrectly. You have channel tags? Um, I think. Let me see. I don't, but you don't have tags on your videos, I don't believe. I thought I did. Maybe I, maybe I just got confused. And then this is all, all recent, so. Yeah. So, channel. Yes, yeah, so you do have tags in there. Is there, um, I did a quick Google search on like what tags like should go on a fitness channel. Cause I know that definitely matters when it comes to SEO. Um, is there any suggestions or anything you would change with what I currently have there? Yes. I would change a lot of these. Um, they, I, I mean, they call it up here keywords, but really it's, it's key phrases. Um, you want to try and match up your key phrase. I mean, ultimately what you're doing, there's no real proven metric that says that channel keywords have that much of an effect on whether or not your, your um, channel, like your channel's growth. But what it does is it optimizes finding your audience. So in order to do that properly, you want your key phrases to be similar to what the audience is searching for. <coughs> so somebody may be looking for exercises for a bad back. That literally may be how they're typed. Because you got to think from that, you know, um, you think of a typical client that you have at your clinic. A lot of them are not that um, familiar with fitness uh, terminologies, you know, so they're not going to say like, oh, I got a bad uppy dorsimus, so-and-so, like, <laughs> they're going to come in and say, my back is killing me. Um, so, I mean, you have to look at it from that perspective. Those are the kind of key phrases. Now, you can still add some of the specifics because there are people who are a little more knowledgeable who may be looking for more specific um, content, but I would be adding more key phrases in there like, you know, when somebody calls you at your clinic and they've got a problem, what, what are they, what's the problem? And type, literally type those in if they, if they attract your channel, like, you know, exercises for a bad back, exercises for tennis elbow, exercises for arthritic pain, exercises for like, and just keep filling it and filling it until they say you can't put any more. Yeah. Okay. And, Sounds and good. And that's what I would do with all the individual videos. Cause each one of your videos is, is typically for helping with some sort of an ailment. So just how, think of all the different ways that your clients would be asking, um, be looking for that, uh, that ailment, like how they'd be searching for it. That sounds good. It, it's really just getting out of your own head and getting into the head of the audience. 
Um, Because, I mean, again, no offense to anybody, but there are a lot of people who will not go to kinesiology when they have a problem and when they should. They will try and do it on YouTube because they, you know, whether that's a financial situation, they can't afford it or they don't have insurance or whatever that may be. So they're going to try and fix it on YouTube. And again, they're probably not knowledgeable that you probably should be seeing a professional, but they're going to YouTube it. So it's like, how are they searching for that? It's. So it's just kind of that, that balance. You don't want to bait people in, but you have to kind of position yourself so that they can find you. And at least the bottom line is with your videos, they're getting the proper guidance. Because I guarantee you there's people out there giving the same advice as you who have no business giving that advice. <laughs> so, All right. I've been getting a lot of views with <coughs> shorts on every video. Should I continue creating them? Um, hard to tell Elite without seeing your analytics. Um, if it's getting you views and subscribers and they're sticking around, I mean, keep doing it. Um, but again, at some point, you'll, you will have to build a, uh, a kind of a foundation and a, and a structure to your channel. Because just constantly posting that, it just becomes like an Instagram account. You'll get, you'll get some views, but it's not going to really help with overall growth if, if monetizing and creating a small business out of it is your um is your game plan um i, d I don't know how long the shorts thing's going to last i'm still trying to understand it um have you heard about that friend the whole thing with shorts right now i'm not even familiar with what do you mean by shorts like just short so, videos uh youtube is basically trying to emulate um TikTok. so they're, oh. they're promoting videos right now that are filmed right. with the like the phone perpendicular screen and you just basically put like, and, and you could try a couple of these because a lot of your insights are short, but just doing something in your phone, like a quick tip for back pain or something. And you just put the title in hashtag short. And uh, there are people in this live stream right now who have maybe a hundred or 200 subscribers who are getting six, seven, eight, nine thousand 9,000 views on a short who get on wow. average, like a hundred views on a video. So it's uh it's something I'm still trying to understand exactly how it's working, but it just seems like they're promoting those videos, trying to get people to spend more time here doing those kind of videos as opposed to on competitive uh, platforms. It's something I've definitely considered because that is the trend. Like TikTok is so big right now. Yeah. I, I haven't jumped on TikTok yet. I have no desire to. My kids don't it's want me to. <laughs> it's, it's, Def, it's not a rabbit hole, it's a black hole where you can just scroll and stay on there. But yeah, right. it's definitely worked for a lot of people in terms of just like you even see it integrated on Instagram. People yeah. will make their video on TikTok and post it on Instagram. Yeah, I've seen that. I, I'd say I've never, I've never been on TikTok. I, <laughs> I wear that as a badge of honor. <laughs> <laughs> I got to draw the line somewhere. I spend too much time on YouTube as it is. You know what? Your daughters will get you on TikTok one of these days. Let's just say that. <laughs> we'll it's true. That renegade dance, it's going to happen. <laughs> Annaline, just seeing your comment there. Good morning to you. Let me know how you like it later. Sam, you can Shetty. Hey, everyone. Good morning to you. Hope I said your name right. Facebook, I hear talk about collaborating with other YouTubers. What exactly does that mean in our niche? Um, it, it just what it says, it just means collaborating. Um, if you go to my channel, I'm not the only person who does workouts on my channel. I actually was never intended to be the person doing workouts on my channel. I was producing the workouts and I had friends and colleagues who came in and um, they would shoot the act, do the actual choreography for the workouts. Um, the only time I started on my own channel was when uh, the, the lockdown, the first lockdown hit about a year ago and my channel was just starting to explode and I had to keep going. So I am certified as a trainer and I jumped in and, and basically did it. And now I still do some videos on there. But um, so that's one thing with my channel that is probably one of the um, things people like is that there is a variety of content from different um, trainers, but it could be anything. Um, I've mentioned to people, clients to try trading videos just for fun. like. Take, get somebody to do a video for your channel, you do a video for their channel and swap it out. Nobody should be in competition on YouTube. There are 3 billion people on YouTube and everybody's different. 
you guys could all be trading workouts, trading choreography ideas. It really doesn't matter. Your, your audiences are not going to be the same. It's just no way. Um, and sometimes it's, it's the person's personality that they gravitate towards. So, um, yeah, collaborations can be anything. I know Valerie, um, here's your plug, Val. Valerie is doing her first live stream this Sunday, I believe. If I'm wrong, Val, you type it in the comments there. Um, if any of you guys have time, make sure you check it out. I know I will be. Um, and one of the things that Valerie is doing is she's having some people from this community that she has uh, befriended um, over the, the last few months that are going to come on. They're going to talk all things fitness. So it could be something like that, a live stream with a colleague. It could be um, if you're in the same city as somebody doing a workout together. Um, tons of ways to do it. And it does help. Even if you're both smaller YouTubers, you could just find um, you guys click together on camera and, and suddenly there's something there. And there's, there's lots of opportunities for collaboration. I'm a huge believer in it. Um, and, and I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for something to help kind of spurt growth a little bit. And it's a lot of fun too when you have somebody you can play off of on camera. Val, I've never hit my subscriber count, but I've seen others do just, yeah, no, I, I know yours is up there, Val. I, and again, I, I just think it's, there's no harm in it other than psychologically, I think everyone needs to get past that and just, just put it out there and just work on it. You know, it's, it's motivation for you and just don't think about it. Oh, thank you, Mel. I think you're talking to me. <laughs> Sharon, regarding tags, I do have to change them depending on the title and description of the video <coughs> to score close to 100%. Should that be the goal to get the score close to, closer at 100? It is, Sharon. Um, my my take on, on, on tags and stuff, like again, uh, I am a believer in it. I think you can optimize tagging and stuff, but I really am more focused on um, presenting your content as the audience is looking for it. Um, so key phrases over keywords. Um, you know, the, the problem with tags, what happens now is they will say that the tags that are really good for your videos are so oversaturated, you'll get, they won't help you because you'll be so far down the pecking order, your videos just don't surface. So they try and give you unique tags, which might cater to a smaller audience, but will get you noticed by those people and help you grow. And um, so there is something to it, but I mean, I would really just be focusing on connecting with the audience um, on a human, organic, emotional level, because that is the core of this industry. Um, you know, all the little things you can do with SEO, definitely do it. But at the end of the day, it's really going to come down to you as a trainer con uh, connecting with your audience and with an expanded audience, which to me comes down to um, presenting your content as the audience wants to see it and niching your content so that your channel is specific to a certain audience, which we discussed ad nauseum last week. Thoughts what does Sherry mean with regards to score? Um, I think she's probably talking about TubeBuddy. So some of, uh, you, you can use it, there's an app called TubeBuddy and it will give you, um, there's a membership fee that you pay for, but it will give you advice on key tags. And it will give you like it'll you can actually look at other people's videos and it'll give you a key tag score whether their videos are like their their tags are good or bad i see um like again i i always fill up my key tags but i i don't put a lot of effort into it and my channel's doing fine so again i'm not telling people to neglect that but it's not something that i personally obsess over to a great degree I will, um, you know, I will try and optimize it, but usually now what I do is I just try and use key phrases that are similar to search terms. Um, the same thing with my, with my work, um, a good, a good example actually is, um, I spoke to some, uh, Kim who's on here, uh, hit your goals last week. And she, we were looking at her analytics and one of the things that came up, I don't want to get this wrong, but basically when we went through her videos, I think she's still struggling with growth. Like it's not growing to the point she wants it to. And um, we looked at her videos and it's like, well, she had a kettlebell video, the latest one that she did, and she got four subscribers from that video. And, the, and then there was another kettlebell video that didn't get any. Then there was another kettlebell video earlier that got, I think it was one or two subscribers out of her last three kettlebell videos. The difference in the three is the ones that got subscribers had kettlebell and big writing 
on the um, on the actual uh, thumbnail, as opposed to um, you know having something else in there. And some in her other video, she had kettlebell, I think, really small. So I mean, little things like that. And that's why, like, if you look at my thumbnails, I've always got whatever that thing is that I'm using that day, whether it's sandbag or kettlebell, it's going to be there in big letters on the thumbnail. It's going to be very dominant in the title. Um, because one thing I found is that I've niched down and, and kettlebell and sandbag videos do really good for me. The, the kettlebells do good right out of the gate. The sandbag videos start slower because it's obviously much more niche, but they had this organic groundswell of growth that four or five, six months in, they all of a sudden start to get really good. Um, so, I mean, I, um, that's, that's the thing. For me, it's just, you know, title and key tags based on how people talk. You know, keep it, keep it real in that sense. Oh, speak of the devil. Hit your goals. Good morning, Kim. I was just talking with you. I guess you said that 10 minutes ago, though. Um, metabolic conditioning. Hey, all real helpful advice. Chasing watch time versus quick views. It has helped me shift my focus to chasing lower number quality views on YouTube instead of quick IG Facebook drop-offs. Yeah, uh, I mean, the only time that I share on Instagram now is, or Facebook is really if um, there's a sponsor involved or something. Um, otherwise, it's only done damage to my channel in terms of watch time. So I have proven metrics for myself that when I use Instagram, watch time goes down. When I don't use Instagram, watch time goes up. Channel grows more. So it's, it's worked for me. I've tried it both ways, multiple times to be sure. Um, a lot of people will fight me on that, though. A lot of people think that you've got to share it to the other platforms. I don't, especially in the early going. It might not matter as you get bigger, but in the early going, I think it hurts you because I think the extended watch time tells that algorithm that you are, you are something and that they want to show you to more people. Um, no problem, Elite. Evan V. Fit, I just started doing shorts. How are they going for you, Evan? I, I haven't heard too many negative stories. Like, everyone seems to get a good pop uh, view from it. Where am I at here? Shorts surprised me too. Today I did one last Sunday. Let me know how it went, Sam Sam Yukta. Yukta? Sam Yukta. If I'm saying that wrong, please let me know. I apologize. Sharon saw Val's changes. Yeah, Val's change, uh, channel's been updated a little bit. We're not done yet, but it got you some subs too. That's awesome. Elite, check out my channel to see the shorts results. Oh, cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get more views. Okay. <laughs> He's trying to get more views. Smart businessman. That is smart. Um, Drink the live stream plug. Important. Yeah, if you guys get a chance, guys, and, and Val, be sure to um, put it in the Facebook group and, and be sure to put a link in, this, in these comments. And I'm sure if people are around, they'll take a listen to it. Oh, Sharon, you have to jump off in a few minutes. Okay. So you want? We'll leave your um, we'll leave your assessment for this week then. Sounds good. Mel, I'm just seeing the really why is that comment. I'm not sure if that's based on something we were talking about. Just let me know. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any um, manager controls on your on your page, um, Sharon. I checked this morning. I, I knew that they were gone. They were gone a couple of days after we did the, the initial assessment. So you'll have to just give them to me again. And thank you very much. I'm glad you, you came out and we'll be talking to you soon. Anyone needs help in the channel, read the launch package as well. Thank you, Valerie. And we're not even done yet. Yeah, for any of you guys that are new in here, um, I don't promote it a lot, but, um, up in the corner, because it's over there right now, uh, the buymeacoffee.com trainer hub. That is basically no need to buy me free coffees. Some of you do, which I greatly appreciate. 
But what I've done with that channel is I've tried to create a bit of a resource for you guys. There's everything in there from um, little cheap uh, interval timers, if you're looking for an interval timer for your videos, which I do highly recommend you find one somewhere um, because a lot of people doing the videos seem to like it. When I started my channel, I didn't use interval timers. Got a lot of people loving the videos, but hating that there was no timer, added it, and they were happy. So um, there's also uh, email templates. If you're looking to get sponsored, even if you have under 500 subscribers, there's email templates that basically explain to you how to reach out to companies and ask for sponsorship with as little as zero subscribers. Um, there's, there's just a bunch of little things. I'm gonna be adding more on there. There's also one-on-one -on -one consultations uh, to do basically full assessments on your channels, um, channel audits. Um, we have a YouTube launch package, which is an affordable way to basically rebuild your channel, SEO, aesthetics, everything to turn into a professional looking brand. Um, there's, there's a bunch of stuff. If you're interested in that sort of thing, check it out. If you're not, don't worry about it. Um, but I'm always going to be adding stuff in there. So you can also just follow that channel or that platform, whatever it is. And, and, um, you'll get notified if some new little thing comes up. So see you, Sharon. Um, Facebook user. I feel like I'm doing this all wrong. Should I try not? posting on Facebook and Instagram and just see what happens based on my SEO alone. Um, without knowing who you are, your channel or your analytics, I can't really say much about it. Um, but if you go into, I'll, I'll show you with, um, with Fran's channel here. When I go into my channel analytics, then you want to go to reach and you want to go to uh, external traffic sources. So now, again, um, Francesca has obviously posted her channel on, on Facebook. Now, she's not gonna, she doesn't have a lot of views, period, right now, so I don't know if this stuff will give us much information as far as what we need. Um, also, the other thing with her channel is um, all her videos are in that one minute time frame. So her average watch time is probably gonna be under a minute regardless. Um, anyway, so you go to traffic source external. And then you look at Facebook. So average view duration, like I said, it's, it's one minute and one second. Um, and they're watching 42% of the video. So that's actually a good thing because you are going to get for every person that watches it, you're going to get people that look at it for five seconds and then they turn it off. Um, but that is where you look at that stat and you can judge for your, <laughs> for yourself, whether it's happening happening. Um, where you compare it is, and now we can't do much of a comparison on Francesca's channel, but we'll look here anyway, <laughs> excuse me. Um, if I go to YouTube search, so now people that are finding her in search right now, they're only watching for 29 seconds. So really that doesn't, um, that, that the metrics here don't help us. Um, but what oftentimes you will see is you'll go to YouTube search, which is people finding you organically or suggested videos, and you'll see a number that usually is significantly higher than the Facebook number. If that's the case, like if, for example, this was three minutes and 34 seconds on, on this or on the YouTube search, and then your, your Facebook videos were 30 seconds, then what's happening is it's bringing your overall average watch time down, um, which can be a problem. Um, so that, that's when I would suggest taking a break from Facebook for a month from promoting on Facebook to see if that number, go, if your average watch time goes up, even though you may have less views. Um, so it's, it's kind of a balancing act, but those are the two metrics that you want to combine. Um, again, it's, it's really hard to tell with, because this channel is so new, but, um, that's basically where you want to look. You go into your traffic sources, look at YouTube search, look at suggested videos, and then, then compare that to external what you're getting from places like Facebook and, and that will kind of tell you um, whether or not there's a problem there. Um, let's see here. All right, I'm going to shut down your channel for now, Fran. You're welcome to stay on as a guest if you want. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thanks so much for all of that insight. No, no problem. And as I said, I think we'll sidebar after this and, and talk about what exactly the, maybe the next step would be for your channel. Mm -hmm. Um, cause there's a 
good structure there right now. I think what you need now is kind of that, that content that keeps them. I, I think as it is, if you set your SEO up properly, um, you'll start seeing traffic, but I don't think there's a lot there to keep them. Um, so I think that's when you get into more things like, like again, like what you did yesterday with the um, posture and stuff like that. I think you could become a very big resource for personal trainers because um, you're giving them content that they can try and emulate to their clients and, and talk about as well. And, and then for also for people that are having issues like that. So I think mixing those videos, maybe, maybe throwing some work gets in stuff like that, but mm -hmm. we can, we can definitely talk with the long form content will bring your average watch time up, which helps you surface, which helps more people find you. And it just kind of rolls it like that. Sounds good. But, um, but yeah, I think, cause that channel has been sitting there for a few months now. I think it's time to put. Yeah, it's on. time. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a lot of back end stuff in my defense, but it still needs attention. A thousand percent. Oh yeah, no, I, I know you, cause you haven't tried yet. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. You've been, you've been busy doing other stuff. So. Yeah. Clients and kind of in mid back end stuff, but now that that's all good and gravy, I can just focus on content. Yeah, exactly. And I could probably do an updated banner for you and stuff too. get it kind of a, something. You don't like my banner? Different. What's that? You don't like my banner? But okay. Let me see. Where's the channel at again? It's probably the size, but any insight you have for sure. All things fitness. It's actually not. <clears throat> it's not bad. Um, I might change. I actually like where you're going, even with the tagline. But see mm -hmm. again, like half your tagline is lost under your social media icons. So I would right. probably put that part more centered or off to the other side. Okay. Um, and then, I mean, the, the little kind of the blue part that's on the end is probably just because it's not framed properly. So we could actually frame it properly. Um, still use a picture like that. Um, but I think something a little more generalized, like I, you're on the right track with your fix for all things fitness. Um, but I think you could put something that's just more blunt and generalized that it's like exactly like I, I like the one tagline versus I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. Um, but I think if you say like there's there's probably a way to play on those words that it'll be even more obvious for that average person who might not get what your fix for all things fitness means. Um, I just don't know what that is off the top of my head. I'll have to think about that. Yeah, but it's um, but it, overall, it's actually quite, I've seen plenty worse. <laughs> <laughs> Good uh, to know. <laughs> so, Philip, Philip, uh, by the way, Philip, I got your email yesterday. I had a busy day yesterday. Sorry, I haven't got back to you yet. Um, I know you had a, an issue there with with uh, some of your analytics. So I'll try and get back to that this afternoon. I'm not sure if I can add much to it. Um, because it's in a different language, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, the timers and stuff, Philip. If you look in up in that corner, buymeacoffee.com/trainerhub, there's interval timers in there. Um, I'm going to be adding more right now. There's one with kind of a semi-opaque black background, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, the timers are set for 40 seconds on, 10, uh, 20 seconds off. But you can manipulate it to whatever you want to do. Um, I'm going to be adding 60 second timers and things like that. And they're just basically things you can add and take off. And um, people really like that. And sometimes it's almost a motivational thing. If you're doing an exercise and it's a one minute sequence, um, sometimes when you get to that 20 seconds left mark, you're hurting. But sometimes when you can see, okay, there's only 20 seconds left, it kind of helps you power through. And I think that's why people like it. But when there's nothing, they don't know when it's going to end, and that's when they get frustrated. So um, it's a good thing to add to your channel. And um, I just sell them on there for five dollars, and for an additional five dollars, we can we can actually <coughs> excuse me customize the color so it matches your branding and stuff too. So not not a real expensive thing. I don't I don't look to make money off that stuff. It's just stuff that's there for you guys. Um, but yeah, it's up in the corner there. It's buymeacoffee.com/trainerhub. And all right, everybody. Got, did I actually catch up finally? 
I think I did. Right on. Any more questions, guys? We can always chat in the meantime. But yeah, you have a ton of um, help. What's that? I said this has been a huge help today. Everything. Yeah, I, I want to see. Um, I actually want to really see what what we can do with your channel because there's so many good things on there. Like it's just, it's interesting to see what people are looking at too. No, I don't know if this is internal stuff or what, but like, um, obviously you promoted the one from yesterday, so it's got a lot of views. Um, scissor slides, thread the needle, prone raises. Like it's the weirdest thing. Like when I saw that trap bar deadlift and it, it's 600,000 views on it now. Um, you just, I, it's the last video I would have expected to do anything. And then I, I shot, you know, probably 10 or 15 different little tutorials with Joe that day. And they've all just done whatever, like a few views here and there, but that one just boom, just took off. Um, is there a way to pay through Venmo? It's set up through PayPal. Um, so basically when you go through it and you don't need a PayPal account, you can pay with like a credit card or anything. Um, but it just basically goes straight to PayPal. That's, I don't think, cause in Canada, I don't think we have Venmo if I'm not mistaken. But, um, if you have trouble, if there's something there you want and you can't get it through that, I can also send you like a PayPal invoice, <laughs> excuse me, or something like that too. That's just the only thing that's kind of universally international. Um, because there's people here from everywhere, so. Anyway, are you at the office now, Fran? I'm in my kitchen. In your kitchen? Slash, like, gym, slash, living room. <laughs> All right. Still Downtown condo living. <laughs> yeah, these lockdowns got to end. It's been, it's been long enough. I'm sure to get out of the house every now and then. Yeah. But yeah, this is where I do a lot of work right here yeah magic happens yeah <laughs> <laughs> i bet well if the questions are running low guys we'll start winding things down um fran i can let you get back to work thank you yeah. so much again for no having no problem at all and as i said like I, i'd love to um you know help you get rolling with that stuff and then you know two or three months from now we can look at it and do a comparison yeah, so absolutely. Really we've gone. And, uh, that's the nice thing about your channel is it's a blank slate almost. So we can, but the we know the content's good. So now it's just purely what sort of SEO stuff can be done to get it out there. Cause I can absolutely see you. It's a perfect scenario for developing like one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, you know, again, like I, I use buy me a coffee for consultations and things like that as well. And those consultations are purchased through these live streams. Mm -hmm. um, You'd be ideal to do a live stream too, where you can talk about different ailments and stuff every week, take questions from people. And it's a I'm actually way. doing like an Instagram series with a friend of mine, oh, yeah. former colleague, and we're doing it every Friday. Like last week we did the first one, kind of the differences between kinesiology and personal training, like the physical yeah. practice and getting the word out of what those professions entail and what the client should look for. And I was actually thinking of also just sharing those to YouTube because they're also long, yeah. um, long content, yeah. as you said. Yeah, there's, <laughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, I, I mean, and they do well. Like they, I'm really happy that the live streams have helped my vlog exponentially. Like I, I liked where the channel was before, but being able to actually talk to these guys and, um, and really hear firsthand exactly what the problems are, um, to me is huge. Um, and, it, and it gives me something to play off of and something to talk about instead of just bringing something up every week. But, um, but no, I mean, your brand is perfectly set up for becoming like a digital monetizable brand through consultations, digital training, stuff like that. Um, it's just a matter of getting that front line set up, get it moving, and then people have to find you. And then, you know, they, they find your videos, then they get into the live streams and then you can kind of develop relationships with them. And that's the thing with fitness is it, it really comes down to developing relationships. I mean, you know, that in the physical world, it's the same thing. Um, so it's, it's, uh, yeah, 
you're off to a good start. We just have to get you rolling. All right. Sounds good. All right. Yeah, enjoy your day. Thanks. You too. We will talk to you Bye, very soon. Everybody. <laughs> and you, you. you got some people to follow, I think. You got to go check. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, friend. Have a good day. I'll talk to you soon. You too. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. All right. We are back. Elite, you have a great week. Val, you have a great week. Um, as I said, guys, I can stick around a few more minutes for those questions. Um, <coughs> as I mentioned, I'm going to be adding quite a few new tutorials to the channel in the coming weeks. Um, uh, I'm, I'm starting to free up more time because I'd like to focus on this more because I really enjoy it. And um, something I actually am thinking I'm possibly doing, if you guys have an interest in it, is talking about uh, buy me a coffee in my first six weeks of using that. Um, I think I started late December, early January, something like that, and, um, and how it's helped with the business. Now, obviously, I use it for both now my, my fitness channel and my um, vlog, um, but it's, it's produced some income. Um, and I, I don't know if that's something you guys are interested in or not and learning about how to kind of implement that, but it's something we can't talk about. Budo Pilates, have a great week. Hope you enjoyed today. Enjoyed talking with you yesterday. Budo Pilates and I had a consultation yesterday and we talked about our channel and analytics and what's good and what's going wrong and all that kind of stuff. So I expect some changes coming from her soon enough. Yeah, and guys, if you haven't already, throw your channel links into the comments. Um, Francesca wants to uh, follow some of you guys if you followed her, um, and that'll be the only way she can actually uh, come back and, and uh, find you. Either that or go comment on her videos. Barbara, I enjoyed it very much too. <coughs> My pleasure, Barbara. Um, no, it was, it was great. I think you've got a great channel. Um, if you guys haven't had a chance, uh, check out Budo Pilates as well. Um, she's got a nice channel over there. It's a, a mix of Pilates and a bit of a, a martial arts um, twist to it, if I'm not mistaken, Barbara. You can, you can tell them better than I can. Case Pilates, you're interested in the buy me coffee? Yeah, I think I'm going to do it. It's just sometimes those can be counterproductive because I would never want it to come across like a any kind of braggadocious thing like if i'm going to do it i will tell you exactly what these channels have made and how i made it and what i did and how you can implement that into your own channels because um, again the majority of the money um, that buy me a coffee has made has come from this vlog which only has 600 subscribers so for a lot of you guys with smaller channels there are ways to implement buy me a coffee into your brand structure but in such a way where it doesn't look like you're panhandling for money. Um, so it's, it's, uh, there, there are ways to do that. And, and again, like I think any way that we can try and make a few dollars for their efforts, cause you guys know as well as I do, this is hard. This takes time. Um, you know, everything from choreographing a workout to filming it, to trying to edit it, trying to make it look good. And then the, just the additional stress of trying to get views on it. Um, it's nice when somebody shows some appreciation, um, and I'm doing a lot more now that I've seen what buy me a coffee can do for the vlog. I've been implementing a lot more into trainer hub and, um, and I'm going to, again, same way where it's like, I don't need tips for watching my videos. Those videos are free, but if I can create, um, additional content that might enhance their experience on my channel, doing my workouts, that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to offer that to them and then I'll promote it through the channel and then they'll have the ability to, um, to, to use that and, 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 or not. It's, it's basically there for them if they want it. Um, oh, there's everybody's channels coming up. Just thinking about the European bank transfer fees, not sure if it would be better for us to get a European company. It might be, um, Krista, I, I wouldn't know much about that. Um, Again, <clears throat> excuse me, with me, whenever somebody purchases off of buy me a coffee, it goes directly to uh, PayPal. 
and that money just sticks in PayPal and any money that comes from buying me a coffee basically goes into back into the channel to make things better here. And, and um, so that's how it's basically set up. Kim, I have it and a few people from my Facebook page have bought me coffees. I don't advertise it. Yeah, I think, Kim, especially in your case, you, you can get potentially a lot of free coffees from it because you come from a club environment where you were teaching group fitness classes. And with the lockdowns and stuff, you've had, um, you know, you've had people that were taking your classes now taking them online, and they're used to supporting you anyhow in a lot of cases. So, um, and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with you guy with you actually promoting it um, at the end of your workouts. Um, you know, having it up in the corner like I do, um, if you're able to add that to your workouts, and just telling people, say, hey, if you enjoyed this workout, um, check out Buy Me a Coffee. I think what you should do, though, is find something that is a product of some sort, whether it's, you know, maybe, maybe you do a 30-day workout program based on, uh, based on your workouts, like the workouts on your channel already. Here's a structure to do for 30 days with you know this day on this day off um and sell that for just a a reasonable price like you could do like a three-day split and a four-day split or things like a beginner's workout four-day split sell them all even for five dollars um that way when you promote buy me a coffee you can in addition to the fact that they can just buy you a coffee um you've got products on there so you can promote the products but then if they check it out they realize oh i can just give her a tip and i want to pay kim for today's class and they do um there's nothing wrong with implementing that. Like, again, I'm not aggressive when it comes to sales either, but I do know that there are things on my Buy Me A Coffee account that would be beneficial. I know there are channels on here that don't have interval timers that probably should because it would enhance their channel a lot. I know there's channels that would like to be making some money, but they don't know how to talk to sponsors. Um, and again, when I've got multiple sponsors and have worked in that environment and understand how um, to uh, how it works on both sides and what they're looking for, it enables me to share those things. And they're all just very low priced things. And then of course, there's also the memberships and stuff like that if people have an interest in that. So um, you're able to add value to their lives, but then at the same time, you're kind of piggybacking the fact that, or you can just give me a tip, um, if that makes any sense. Working on a program with my existing work goods space. Oh, you are good. The red's growing on me, uh, Kim, on the logo. If any of you guys know of Hit, Hit Your Goals channel, um, it was kind of like a yellowish green logo before, which I actually really liked. Um, but the red actually looks, <coughs> excuse me, it looks pretty good. Almost got a bit of a burgundy tone to it. Case plus, do you use private PayPal account or company account? It's a company account. I've had that account for probably 13 years when I first started selling DVDs online. Um, it's been dormant for a lot of the last few years, but I've started using it again. Um, but it's, again, it's me being in Canada. PayPal is really the only way I can charge somebody in the U.S. Um, e like easily for stuff. So, so that's basically why, why I stick to PayPal. And, and I've seen other ones. There's people using, I mean, I know... I, I initially was going to try and use Patreon, but I, it just never did anything for me. I've seen some other ones come up. I can't. I was looking at one the other day. I can't think of the name of it. But so far, Buy Me a Coffee has been pretty good, um, pretty easy to use. I get notified if somebody buys something, so it's like, why, why look for something better if something's working? Um, Elite Fitness. I want you to help me with getting sponsors. Uh, check out Buy Me a Coffee, Elite. Um, and there's also a video on my channel where I reached out to, <laughs> it must have been 300 different companies looking for sponsorships. And out of 300, I got three. And I can assure you that while that does not sound like a very good percentage, um, it was good. It was well worth the 300 emails. And um, those emails and how I wrote them, they're on there. You can actually, you can actually purchase them. You can utilize them. You can replicate them. Um, and send them out to companies. And that's really what it comes down to. It's not a matter of, like, like there's no, no one's going to open doors for you. You have to reach out. You have to lay out your case. And that's why I'm so big on people building their channels properly. Um, the big thing for me when I reached out to these companies that I could say, it's like, 
The average watch time on my channel is 17 minutes and six seconds. The average time that somebody scrolls through Instagram and sees somebody promoting your product is about a fraction of a second as they're flying up the, the newsfeed. So when I have somebody's attention on average for 17 minutes a day, that, that's a lot of time that I can be presenting and, and pushing a product at somebody if I really want to. Um, and that's what sold <coughs> my channel because a lot of these companies look at Instagram and Facebook as being the better way to go, but um, that's changing. Um, I can assure you that's changing. People are realizing that this long form content where you can infuse a product into a long, a workout and stuff like that. And they know that I'm building like with my channels, I'm building a community. I've also talked to these sponsors about this community and the fact that, you know, if you ever want people to review your products, I can name 600 that would review your product in a second. Um, and, and that's the other thing is I do, when I know companies that are looking for people potentially to review products, I post that on Buy Me A Coffee as well. So um, go in there and look, for, look in the extras and there's, there's email templates for, that'll explain how to contact these companies. What is your membership fee? Um, so the membership fee is $449 a year. And what that consists of is usually somebody jumps into the membership after doing a channel uh, overhaul. So there's the YouTube uh, channel launch, which is 275. And what that basically is, is the assessment is done and we do a complete aesthetic makeover. We optimize all of your SEO and get your channel set up for growth. Um, key tags, titles, thumbnails, banners, logos, icons, all that stuff is basically, um, it's given a facelift. And uh, if you wanna look at some channels that I've worked with, um, Hit Your Goals is one. Um, Valerie's uh, uh, um, Home Workout Health Hub. Um, she was in the, in the comment section here earlier. Um, her channel is in the process of being changed over. Um, Tracy Lynn Move Your Body is one. Um, I've worked with quite a few channels on here. Um, Victoria's Sequence is another one. And just basically helping them get get that brand aesthetic, which, which is much more appealing when you're going after sponsors to like a big kind of corporate client and stuff. Um, so usually once that's done, what the membership consists of is it's monthly um, Zoom consultations where we review the analytics, see what's working, see what's not. So we're always optimizing it for growth um, and you're not wasting your time doing something that could uh, be hurting your channel. Um, <coughs> There's gonna be deep dive videos on video editing, um, you know, analytics, things like that that I can't really do on the channel because the channel really has to be 10, 15 minute, you know, videos that have a little bit of an entertainment purpose to them. Whereas this can be something I do for my office. Could be a two hour video, but it might show you entirely how to use Adobe Premiere or Filmora or something to edit your video to make sure it's better. Um, so there'll be stuff like that on there. You get access to all the emails, all the, um, all the content that's on the channel, all the timers and stuff, it, you have full access to all of that. So it's essentially a affordable way to have a coach for 12 months. So you get set up and then you get the constant follow-up um, to make sure that you're going. So for people that are really serious about making their channel um, into a business of sorts, um, it, it could be very valuable if you're not sure how the analytics work if you're not very good with graphic design and things like that. So that's really what it is. Um, there are a handful of people that are in this right now. Um, uh, Kim from Hit Your Goals is a member. Um, Kirsten is a member, um, Kirsten's Quick Fit. Uh, who else am I missing? <coughs> Excuse me, those are the two that came to mind because those are both last week. I know I'm missing people right now. Um, and I know there's some others that are, that are considering it, that are doing it this week and that sort of thing. So. It's something that's there. It's not something you necessarily need, but um, certainly if you're, if you're hitting plateaus, you're not growing, um, you know, it could be an affordable way to, to level up and, and get things moving. Um, yeah. Good applies. I think for all the business things, you need to have a company account. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. Budo Pilates, it's, um, it's been so long since I made that thing, but it is basically a company account. So they probably do look for a business number, I'm thinking, when you're filling it out. 
but you could pro um, you might you might be able to set up a personal one as well because I mean I don't think PayPal is trying to um, you know they're, they're not going to do your taxes for you sort of thing they just expect that you're going to do it you're going to uh, whatever the word is Ely Fitness drop me a link to buy me a coffee sure There's your link to buy me a coffee. Mel, yeah, I'm serious. But I, I knew going into it that most of them wouldn't do it. Because um, a lot of them, it's, it's, it's amazing with some of these bigger companies that they, they will pay somebody $50,000 a year who has 100,000 Instagram subscribers or followers um, without even doing the homework and realizing that 75% of those followers are fake, but then they see somebody who's got whatever amount. Of, I mean, at that time, I think I only had about five or 6,000 subscribers. Um, but a lot of companies don't see that value. So it's very particular in how you present yourself, how your channel looks and what you're offering to them and how you do it. But yeah, I mean, low percentage, but the amount of money that these sponsors have made me is the equivalent of a small salary, like a reasonably good salary. If I wanted to live off YouTube right now, I could. Um, so well worth it. I mean, the emails are essentially a template, and then I have certain areas in the template where you try and personalize it so it doesn't look like dear sir or madam type of email, um, you know, and, and basically just you, you send that out to them and, and it always helps when you have a bit of a knowledge of their product and, and a genuine passion for their product. But in cases where you don't, you don't lie about it. You just basically say, this is who you are. This is who your members are. If it's a female product and you've got 80% of your audience is female, you can mention that. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's always going to be levels in terms of what you can make. Um, some of the sponsors that I started with, um, I worked with them for free for a few months. And then after showing them um, how it was helpful to them, because the other thing is too, in addition to being a getting sponsored or or you know you get putting their products in front of your audience, you're also creating content for them. And we're in such a content-driven society right now, with everything being shut down, these companies can't create content fast enough. So if you're a half-decent content creator, then you're also giving them access to <coughs> excuse me access to your videos and your content, and then they can repost that. And then there's a residual value to you that their audience, which some, in some cases is, you know, uh, thousands and thousands of people are now seeing your content. They may take an interest in you and become a subscriber to your channel. So there's a residual value in that relationship. And then, but I, I go into it. There is a video on this channel that I go into it deep. It, I think the video is titled, um, I sent two, I, asked 250 people to sponsor my channel. It's something like that, but go back to around last July or August, I did that video and it kind of explains it out. Living Love Fit. Do you think aligning my content to appeal to the North American market is a good idea for optimum growth? Thanks, Regan. Where are you at again, Living Love Fit? Are you in the UK? Is that, I, I think that's what it is, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if so, I, I do have a feeling you're in the UK. I, I don't think really there'd be too much of a tweak from the UK to US as far as um, tweaking your content for optimum growth. And, and quite honestly, like I, I think you're better off starting regional and focusing on your own region and building up there. And then there will eventually be a spillover. I mean, unless you're talking about like language barriers and things like that. Um, it's a good question, but again, I, I think one person, some people might have a different answer than me, but my feeling is that um, focus regionally, locally first, and then expand from there. And when the time, you'll know when the time is right to uh, try and focus more in the North American market. Um, again, when I post my videos, I make no bones about it. I'm in Toronto, and um, you know, I guess I could say I'm in New York City, and maybe something would happen. I don't know, but I, I think just focus on your market because also the North American market is extremely oversaturated. So you may become a bigger YouTube star faster in the UK market. And then suddenly you're able to cross over with a little bit of clout. It's like, you know, I'm a 
trainer. He's a pretty popular trainer in the UK. Now he's starting to do content and towards the US more audience. And so I think there's a time and a place, um, whether or not that this is the time to do it. Um, only you know that, but that would, that would be my, my take on that is, is focus locally first. Just sign up for one on one. Look at the calendar. It says 15 minutes. No, it's not 15 minutes. Um, I will fix that for you. Uh, typically it's about 45 minutes. Um, usually I set them for a half an hour, but they tend to run 45 minutes to an hour. So don't worry about that. It's not 15 minutes. <laughs> we, we, we won't even be done shooting the breeze 15 minutes in. So, um, I'll fix that. Cause I, that actually came up with Barbara's yesterday too. When I saw it, it said 15 minutes, um, it, it's not 15 minutes and Barbara who's Budo Pilates, who's in this live stream can attest to that as can Kim, if she's still here, hit your goals. Um, Easy to book, keep it separate from private page. Just on the phone. Marketing department. You know what, um, Kim, uh, Kim, who is a member, um, in full disclosure, uh, that's essentially what this is meant to be um, with the members program. It's like having a marketing department for your business. There are things that I do for members that are not really part of the membership process, but they're little things. You know, the other day, um, for example, Kim wanted to change the colorings in her logo. Um, that's not something I offer as part of the membership package, but rather than her messing around, she's got all her masters for her logos. I did that for her because it doesn't take me too long to do it. She can go about her day. I uploaded it for her. She's all set to go. So there's a lot of little residual things there um, that I try and offer when time permits, um, in addition to the actual structured membership stuff, which will constantly be added upon um, in time. And that's part of the reason why um, I essentially fired a client this week is because I want to focus more on um, this entire program that I'm doing because I, I really like it. I think there is a place for it. I think it's valuable. I've been told that it's helped people. So I'm going to put a lot more effort into uh, not only the channel itself, but the live streams, the member stuff and my workout channel in addition to any other projects that I'm doing. So, but I, I do appreciate you saying that Kim and that that's very much what, um, what it's, it's meant to be. Yeah, and there's the buy me a coffee thing, guys. Facebook user, I thought it was an email. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to there. Um, let me know. Sometimes when different comments come up, I'm not sure what they're all referring to, but if you're still referring to the one-on-one, -on -one, no, it's a Zoom call. So we'll be able to talk one-on-one uh, -on -one in the Zoom call. Um, we can do an assessment and look at your channel analytics and stuff like that. So I don't know why your name doesn't come up on there. Um, but anyway, yeah, it, if it's, <coughs> excuse me, if it's the consult that you're referring to, um, Elaine, okay. I'm just, I'm just checking that your, your thing came in there, Elaine. Um, so yeah, Elaine, what we'll do is we'll set, I will email you after the live stream today. We'll set up a time to do the consultation that, that works for you. And then we'll do a complete um, uh, look at your channel. I'll get you to give me manager privileges so I can do a bit of a dive before we get on the phone just to save time. And we'll find out if there's any pain points, what needs to be done, and then we'll go from there. We'll We'll set you up good. So it'll take as long as it takes, but it will not be 15 minutes. So don't worry about that. Yeah, living love fit. I thought you were in the UK. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought. Um, as I said, I think anything you're doing in the UK, it converts nicely to the North American market anyway. So keep doing what you're doing. Um, I've been on your channel in a little bit. I got to go back and take a look and see what you're up to. Um, but uh, yeah, when you're, you know what? I'm gonna take a look at your channel right now. Why not? Let me see. I feel like the last time I tried to look for your channel, I couldn't find it or something. Let me see here. I 
All right, there we go. Okay, so you've been busy living love fate. You've got a few new, uh, here, let's put you on the spot. Um, what am I screen share? That's not gonna let me see. Oh no, there it is. Oh yeah, yeah. Share screen. All right, Living Love Fits channel. Take a quick look at her here. Wow, you've grown a beard since your uh, profile picture. So this is more of a vlog type post, I'm assuming. So, let's see. So yeah, so I think you're, you're at a point where um, you've got a collection of different time frames, full body workouts. You got a few cameras on the go, which is cool. You got a time stamped. The videos look good. Um, I'll have to look at them with with the uh, with the uh, audio on and stuff. Um, it, I guess it depends on what you're looking to do. Like if this is a video that somebody is supposed to follow, um, you know, as much as all the different transitions and stuff are nice, is that conducive to somebody actually following this workout, or are you just focusing more on a tutorial on a workout they can do at the gym or, or things like that? Um, but uh, we should chat sometime. We'll figure out what exactly you're looking to do and you know, how, how you're wanting that to, um, to play out. But I mean, the videos themselves look quite nice. No problem, man. And yes, Elaine, I will um, most definitely email you um, whenever I get off here and we will set things up and thank you very much. Look forward to chatting with you with the channel. And, <coughs> excuse me. All right, guys. Any other questions, guys, you can think of? Went a little longer than expected today, but that's okay. As long as everybody's getting what they want. Um, but yeah, guys, that's basically, you fire them the questions if you have any. Um, every Wednesday, I'll be here. If you guys are able to come in, um, let me know how you liked the channel reviews today. As I said, Francesca's channel is a bit of a different story because there's not a long history with it. So we're not able to actually look at um, viewer patterns. Um, but certainly, I, I actually am a big believer that her channel could be a great um, resource channel for, for people looking for proper form. And, and I myself, even as a certified trainer, have used her channel and have done searches looking for just a double check that my form is correct on certain exercises and stuff like that because you never want to go into a workout doing incorrect form of something because the other trainers out there will grill you for it um, but uh, if you ever have an interest in having your channel sort of assessed live on the air um, we can do that it's just basically giving me membership privileges i send you an invite you jump on here with me and we will talk it through and we will look at things and basically see what's going on so it's an option for you guys and yeah <clears throat> and as mentioned buy me a coffee is up there in in that corner um uh, lots of little stuff up there if you're if you're in need of interval timers stuff like that as i said it's it's five dollars for an interval timer um it's an additional five dollars i can actually um do it in your brand colors um or specify the length of time and stuff like that so there's stuff like that. There's going to be thumbnails and all that stuff added up there. So it's something if you want to follow it, feel free. If you're looking for a consultation, that would happen up there. Membership contents up there. You guys can also email me anytime. I'll add my email in here. 
Um, I don't always get back same day. I, tr I do usually, I try to. Um, but if you have questions about any of the services that are offered or just about channels in general and stuff, um, you know, that's what this live stream is for, but you can also reach out to me directly. Um, we also have the Facebook group now, which I've got to start adding that to the live stream. Um, we have a private Facebook group for, for people that basically follow the channel. And I'm going to paste it in here for you. Uh, we'd love to have you guys over there. The conversation goes on all week. Um, a lot of the guys in the community work together. They will share thumbnails, share ideas, get feedback from other trainers who are trying to grow their channels. Um, so that is someplace, if you're not already there, jump over, join that community. It's, it's private, just, just uh, apply and I'll let you in. And um, so that's kind of how we keep in contact during the week. And it's a great place to ask little questions and stuff like that as well. Uh, and no problem, Mel. Um, as I said, you've got a great channel as well. I've been on your channel. Um, always happy to try and help you out where I can. And um, yeah, and, and I appreciate you supporting this channel. So we're all in this together, guys. Um, and yeah, if you guys ever, if you haven't already, if you want to check out my channel sometime, um, it's over on YouTube and it is called Trainer Hub. And I just added in the comments there. But that is it for today, I think unless I see a comment come up in the next 10 seconds while I take my last drink of coffee. I want to thank you guys for coming out. Thank you to Francesca for coming out and, and, and going over her channel and stuff and adding to the show. And uh, Sam Yuk why do I keep saying that wrong? Sam Yukta Shetty. I apologize. I get called Regan a lot and my name's Regan, so I always try my best to get people's names correct. Um, so I do apologize if I'm saying that wrong. Feel free to correct me. Um, but uh, you're welcome. Uh, I'm happy to share the information. I'm glad I'm worth something to somebody. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I appreciate you guys all coming out. I appreciate you guys letting other people know about these live streams. Um, you know, any, anybody that you think might benefit from some of these. Um, but in addition to the live streams, there is going to start being more actual produced content on the channel. It's been a few weeks since I've done anything. Um, just been very busy and, and kind of restructuring things myself in my own life here. So a lot more to come, some really cool stuff to come. I'm really excited about this channel and what's going on right now. I'm excited for what you guys are doing and happy to be a support system in your YouTube channel journeys. Um, oh, I did get it right, perfect. <laughs> All right, guys, you guys enjoy your, your weeks, your weekends. I will see you next Wednesday. I'll probably talk to you before that. Um, have a good one, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Take care now.